Hello everyone and welcome to another Mad Fab Recommends video. This time we're going to be looking at a novel from Gregory Benford called Eater that was published in 2000. Now this novel is more of a first contact. The alien doesn't really want Earth but what it wants humans are going to have a difficult time giving. Now about the author Gregory Benford he isn't just a science fiction author, he's also a physicist and his novels tend to be a little deep on the physics side of things and he creates in this novel a rather unique alien. And if you like this content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when a video is dropped. And with that, let's get into it. Our story begins at the Mauna Kea Observatories on the Big Island. When Amy Major came into Dr. Benjamin Knowlton's office to tell him about two GRBs that were detected 13 hours apart coming from the same source, Benjamin made sure that these two bursts were put on the top of the list for re-examination by other telescopes. So they double-checked and it turns out not only was it not in a distant galaxy, it was in our galaxy and they realized from the spectrum that it was something new, something they'd never seen before. And this is when Dr. Kingsley Dodd, Astronomer Royal, came into the room. Using the VLBI, they determined that whatever it was, it was in the Oort cloud and coming into the solar system. Their calculations show that whatever it is had the mass of Earth's moon. They now realize that the object was a miniature black hole and it was headed for Jupiter. They soon realize that it was either intelligently guided or it was intelligent itself. Once that was relayed up the chain, a US agency came in and took over control. With their satellites and telescopes, they were able to watch as that small black hole consumed asteroids and comets and use the energy release to go where it wanted. They diverted some of their unmanned spacecraft to head to Jupiter to get a close-up look at the intruder, who they now named the Eater. Finally, they got a signal from the Eater, a signal beamed directly to Arecibo, and it said in a hundred languages, I desire converse. After some discussion, they decided to answer, and they answered, we desire converse also. So the conversation began. The first thing they asked it was, who was it? Where was it from? Or what did it want? It replied back, I am only myself alone, a composition of fields. Since it only answered one of the three questions, they asked it again, where was it from? It replied, the galaxy. I have journeyed through it since three billion of your years before your star existed. Meanwhile, the government turned Monarchia into the command center and began building more buildings and more equipment up there. They also brought in the Marines for security. They also brought in linguists to help teach it to speak, which it picked up very fast, having billions of years of experience with working and talking to other intelligences on other planets. While the Eater have been conversing with them, giving them information about places it has been and pictures of things it has seen. It never answered the third question, what did it want? Of course, most of this information leaked out to the public, which made the public nervous. People began to wonder, what could this thing do? In time, they realized that they noticed the similarity between the eater's electromagnetic buzz and signals they detected several years ago from a nearby star, which now indicates there may be another one like the eater around that star. Finally, to the question of where it came from, it said it came into being by artifice of ancient biological beings. Then it said after that, it voyaged and became larger in self and in purpose. It also said it wanted humanity to send it art, music, and prevalent enrichment. In return, it promised to give the bounty of other alien societies. 
the Edo finally reached Jupiter. It dipped into Jupiter's atmosphere, sucking up the gases to replenish its reserves so it could continue moving forward. When that was completed, it turned and made a beeline for Earth. The Edo finally revealed that it was created by a very early intelligent civilization whose planet was being chewed up by the black hole. They managed to download their entire culture into it, translating into magnetic information stored in waves. As the eater got closer to Earth, it revealed more of its origins. It said, once long ago, it was a mere natural singularity, a minor remnant of some early astrophysical event, perhaps a fractional remnant of a supernova. Then by accident, this object, which is now my present core, tunneled through the planet of an ancient civilization. The Eater told them that the first civilization became known as the Old One, and it slowly gained control of the GRBs, allowing it to become a voyager between the stars. It began a pursuit of knowledge and diversity, and when it got to other stars that had life, it would take some of the living intelligences and add them to the black hole, thereby giving it even more control so that it can go where it wanted adding more life as it goes. The scientists in Hawaii determined that this could be the answer to the Fermi paradox as to why we haven't seen any aliens. Finally, the eater stopped transmitting and transmitted just one message. Itself now decides to harvest remnants of you selves. It sends now instructions of how to comply. Remnants shall be impacted in place. It was demanding 100,000 people and it said it would teach us how to digitalize them and upload them to its magnetic fields. Now the four main scientists that were in charge was Benjamin Knowlton, his wife Shannon Knowlton, who is dying from cancer, and Kingsley Dart and Amy Major. Of course, many totalitarian regimes quickly complied. They began rounding up prisoners and political dissidents and getting them ready to be sliced so they could be digitally uploaded and sent up to the eater. Shannon Knowlton, who was dying from cancer, decided she wanted to be uploaded. They decided they were going to upload her into a spacecraft and send her to reconnaissance the eater. Kingsley believed that many societies had attacked it with weapons as advanced as Earth, and it had evolved a way to survive even the most fierce of these assaults. He guessed that the most they would expect is to drive it away. First, to use magnetic imaging to scan the neurons of her brain. Then, they took her brain and sliced it into thin slices and scanned it to make sure they got everything. Then, her uploaded consciousness was in a long black box that they loaded into a searcher spacecraft. When the eater got close to the earth, they decided not to give it what it want and to launch missiles at it. So from the Liaodong Peninsula, they launched three missiles. The missiles took eight hours to reach the eater. The missile detonated right on target, but inflicted no damage. It kept coming. All the warheads did was make it bigger. The next time that the eater spoke to them, it told them not to call it eater, but to call it ultimata. The eater came to the very top of earth's atmosphere, 200 kilometers high. It began sucking in the air in the upper atmosphere to replenish itself. It was circling the planet in three hours. When it was over the US, it shot out a beam of high energy plasma. With that beam, it struck Washington DC, killing at least 100,000. Their only hope was with Shannon, who was on a searcher spacecraft headed towards the Eater. Shannon was a searcher spacecraft in charge of all the other spacecraft and she tried to get a look past the magnetic fields of plasma that surrounded the black hole. They linked Benjamin up to her so that he could keep her stable and concentrate on the job she had to do. The government of the world decided to shut down all communications, all TV, all radio, all satellite, all communications so that the eater would not be able to hear anything. It responded by launching a magnetic attack against Hawaii. Meanwhile, the eater was eating our satellites. It began using magnetic attacks against the Earth, and that was destroying communications. They sent up a new bomb to Shannon, and this time they gave her instructions 
to put it directly in the center of the magnetic lines around the black hole. And with the magnetic attacks going on on Earth, she lost contact with Benjamin. The magnetic attacks on Earth had virtually destroyed the Earth's ability to transmit to Shannon in space. Just after they lost communications, they got some information about the eater that they needed to get to Shannon. So they outfitted Benjamin and sent him up to give her the information personally. He was also there to encourage her to go through with what she had to do, even though it would technically destroy her. Meanwhile, they used suicide nuclear bombers and barium to attack the eater. They drove it back up around the moon where the hope Shannon would be able to get into it and attack it with an antimatter canister. When Benjamin got to her and uploaded the information he had, she began her attack and he was linked with her as she did. She dropped down into the black hole right at the magnetic swirls of the event horizon and she dropped her antimatter canister. And as it exploded, she fell into the black hole. Benjamin had helped. He had sent nuclear weapons that exploded just ahead of her that allowed her to get through. The explosions in the black hole happened behind the moon, which protected the Earth. And just as the antimatter explosion hit the eater, it sent out a bolt of current through the circuit that connected the Earth to the moon. And it hit Mauna Kea. And since Kingsley was outside, he was killed instantly. But the eater wasn't dead as they thought. One day, a GRB jet began pushing it out of the solar system. It was headed to the star where they picked up signals that something just like it was around that star. It was headed there. Long wind scanners show that it was greatly diminished, but it wasn't dead. And Shannon, she had fallen into the black hole and popped out the other side, a white hole, into a new universe where others before her who had fallen into the black hole had popped out and created a civilization. And that's how the book ends. The interesting thing about this is that the alien was unique. It was a black hole and its motives was that it wanted to incorporate humans into itself, add them and their knowledge to itself. Anyway, I hope you like this and we'll give it a shot. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.